Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah. Vessalatu vesselam ala Resulillah sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. My brother Abu Sam al-Zahibi coming at you at a time where we could describe it as a tumultuous time for our ummah as almost every week we find some kind of situation jumping off and taking place where we find people polarized and taking opposite opinions and issues that are presenting themselves. Something happened yesterday that I want to, inshallah, as we gel, address very briefly and shortly, and that is the death of one of the ulama of al-Islam, and that is the Sheikh Yusuf al-Qurdawi, rahmatullahi alayhi, rahmatan wasi'ah. There's no doubt for anyone who is in the middle and he's balanced and he doesn't go overboard and he tries to practice what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave dawah to and taught when he said, love the person that you love moderately because the day may come where he becomes your enemy and you hate him and hate the person that you hate moderately because the day may come where he becomes a person who you love. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal every day to guide us to the Sirat al Mustaqim in the middle, not too far to the right and not too far to the left, like the Yahud and the Nasara who went to extremes in their religion. And one of the aspects that they went extreme in is in their love and their hate for people. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, Qul ya ahl kitab, la taglu fi dinikum. Oh, people of the book. Don't go overboard in your religion. So a Sheikh Yusuf Al-Qardawi is a personality that people went extreme as it relates to him. Extreme hatred for him and extreme love for him. And I'm here to say, inshallah, as we gel that, I do not agree with the minhaj of a Sheikh Yusuf Al-Qardawi, many of his positions, his mawaqif, over the 96 years that he was on the face of the earth. I don't agree with a lot of his positions in the deen, his positions that were political, what he was responsible for and what he called to. I don't agree with it. Wallahi, I don't support his minhaj. I don't support what he said in many instances. But nonetheless, he is a Muslim. And not only is he a Muslim, but he was a scholar. And the proof that he's a scholar is that he set on a lot of the very important international bodies that many of the ulama of the sunnah who we love, honor, and respect, they also sat on those same committees along with him. Rahmatullahi alayhi. A Sheikh Yusuf Qurdawi, Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, has gone forward to receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his reward or his punishment. I'm here to ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to have rahmah upon him and to forgive him and to put him into the Jannah al firdaus without any adab and without any hisab. For verily, the rahmah of Allah Azza wa Jalla wasi'at kulla shayin. It has extended and it covers everything. The rahmah of Allah. And it's not okay for anybody to come and to try to restrict Allah's rahmah on his creation. The man died as a Muslim, and as a result of that, I'm a revert in this religion, and I see what Allah said in the Quran when he commanded me, and people were like me. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا ذِلِّنَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Oh, our Lord, our Lord, Allah, our Lord, forgive us and forgive those who have preceded us and went before us in this deen. And don't put in our hearts any enmity, any animosity, any hatred or rancor towards those people who have preceded us in this religion. A Sheikh Yusuf al-Qardawi, rahmatullahi alayhi, was like any other scholar, any other human being. He gets it right, 
and he gets it wrong. He's like some of the scholars of Al-Islam who made some big mistakes, rahmatullahi alayhim, but we don't have any tawaqquf or any taraddud to ask Allah Ta'ala to forgive them. And then for me personally, I can't speak for anyone else. I only can speak for myself. For me, when I came into this religion and I saw three of the great scholars of this era, Sheikh Al-Albani was Sheikh, Abdul Aziz ibn Baz was Sheikh, Ibn Uthaymeen. What I saw from them, Rahmatullah alayhim, is that they used to be gentle and easy with people. And in particular, they used to have a gentleness with a Sheikh Yusuf al-Qardawi, a Sheikh al-Albani, for an example, Rahmatullahi alayhi, who is my single favorite scholar from the contemporary ulama. And I thank Allah Azawajal for opening up for me the doors of a Salafiyah and the wind of a Salafiyah first came to me from Asham, from Jordan. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Sheikh Al Albani was a person who stood strong for the way of Al Hadith and for the Aqidah of Al Hadith, but he was a gentle man. Rahimullah ta'ala. And he used to say pe to people over and over again, Al Haq Thaqil, Fala Nastathkiluhu, be aslubina. The truth is heavy in and of itself. So we people were giving dawah, we Muslims, don't make it even more heavier by the way we deal with people. That's what I used to hear the sheikh saying all the time, wallahi. And then from his madrasa was my sheikh, Ali Hassan al-Halabi, rahmatullahi alayhi, who was the same way, the same way, gentle with the people, hayyan, layyan, qareeb, just dealing with the people in a nice way. As it relates to a sheikh, Al Albani, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, there's a book that a Sheikh Yusuf Al Qurdawi he wrote, and that book was called Al Halaw Al Haram in Al Islam, the Halaw and the Haram in this religion. A Sheikh Yusuf Al Qurdawi was with the group, the Al Ikhwan Al Muslimin. I don't support this group. I have given dawah against what I perceive is the evil from this group. These Jama'at in Al Islam, all of them are a problem. But the Ikhwan al-Muslimin are a specific problem. I'm not here to discuss that. But my point is, a Sheikh al-Albani, he saw that the Ikhwan al-Muslimun, they have a lot of activity and a lot of nashat. And they have organization where many people used to get this book that a Sheikh Yusuf al-Qurdawi, he wrote. Al-Halaw al-Haram in al-Islam. One of the first books I remember purchasing when I became a Muslim. When a Sheikh Al Albani saw and he knew that this book was spread amongst the Ummah of Al Islam, he paid attention to it and he came to this book and he took care of the hadith to distinguish which hadith are sahih in this book and which hadith are da'if in this book. And he also made some points, some ta'liqat, in which he would refute a Sheikh Yusuf Al Qardawi with Rahmah with ease. So this is a way of a Sheikh Al Albani giving advice to our Ummah. He knew that people would purchase this book and people would have this book in their homes, as many of you do. But he wanted to clean it up and he wanted to bring people to the thick of the hadith according to the way the righteous predecessors were upon it. There was another man from the Ikhwan al Muslimin, Sayyid Sabiq, he wrote a book called Fiqh Sunnah. Sheikh al-Bani came and cleaned that book up. Tamam al-Minna. There's another Sheikh from the Ikhwan al-Muslimin. His name is Muhammad al-Ghazali. He wrote a book called Fiqh al-Sira. A Sheikh al-Bani came and he gave khidmah and service to all of these books. Showed us what's sahih and what's da'if. And also he made comments. Is anyone in his right mind who knows the weight and the position of Al-Imam Al-Albani, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Rahmatin Wasiya. Is anyone going to say Al-Albani came and he was mutasahil and he supported the dalalat and the inhirafat that these people were on? No one's going to say that. He used to speak about them in his tapes and he would call them Sheikh Yusuf Al-Qurdawi. He would call them Al-Ustad Yusuf Al-Qurdawi. So that's what I saw 
the ulama who I honor and I love and I respect. That's what I saw them doing. And even right now, a Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al Abad, Hafidhullah Ta'ala wa Ra'ahu wa Shafahullah Ta'ala. These scholars, we don't see them coming out, stepping out on Fun Street, making dua against Yusuf al Qurdawi after he has died. We don't see them cursing a Sheikh Yusuf al Qurdawi after they died. No. For me, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon the man and to accept him into his jannah without any adab and without any hisab. The Prophet told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have rahma upon those who in the earth, perhaps Allah will have rahma upon you. Allah mentioned, or the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la tasubbu al amwat. Do not curse those who have died from the Muslims because they have gone forward and they're going to be judged by Allah and they're going to get their reward or their punishment and all of that is with Allah. May Allah Ta'ala give us al-afiyah wa salama and may have rahmah upon our mota. So one of the things that really baffles the mind for me is whenever we find people during these times dying, we'll find some of the brothers doing what some of the Salaf used to do. If a person was a person of inhiraf, he was a person of innovation and he called to his innovation and he made positions that were whacked out, like the Sheikh Yusuf al Qardawi. He made a lot of positions that were disturbing to the mind, disturbing to the heart, disturbing to the spirit of the Muslim who knows al Wala wal Bara, who knows about the Aqidah of Al Islam. He made positions and statements that bordered on kufr. I even remember Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen saying, if it wasn't for al wara I would say the person who said this kalam is a non-Muslim. But he didn't say that because he had wara. But the point is, what I find very disturbing is how when these people die, we have brothers coming out of the woodwork, coming out of the crowd, coming out of the sufuf, and they are cursing them and making dua against them and saying, Alhamdulillah, salihat. They say things like that. But they don't say that when the famous non-Muslims die. You don't hear anything but, but crickets. When the non-Muslims die, you hear nothing but crickets. Here's a man of Al-Islam who died on Al-Islam. And here's a person who died on shirk and kufr. And who spread in the earth kufr and shirk and fasad, and zulm, and fisk. But you don't hear one kalima, one harf. I remember Sheikh Abdul Rahman Abdul Khaliq, another individual, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, who I don't agree with every position that he did. I don't agree with everything that he said. No, I don't agree with that. But similar to him, when he died, people were making sajda to shukr. They were making sajda to Allah. But right around his death, there were many actors and actresses from the Arab world and from you know Pakistan and from Africa people who are criminals who led people astray in their akhlaq and in the aqidah they were well known they died at the time that this man died but the people came out to make sajda thanking Allah that he died and Allah has relieved the lands and the slaves his servants from their fitna we didn't hear them saying anything about these people only when it comes to people who are calling to Al-Islam and they had taqseer and they had some issues and problems, no doubt about that. Okay, that's for them. That's for them. وَلِكُلِّمْ وِجْحَتٌ هُوَ مُوَلِّهَا فَاسْتَبِقُ الْخَيْرَةِ That's what they want to do, I let them do, because there are proofs that the ulama of the past, they used to show happiness at the death of innovators who called to innovation and they were imams and leaders of kufr and innovation the likes of Jahm ibn Safwan and Wasl ibn Ata and Bishr and Marisi if they heard that these people lahum min Allahi ma yastahiqun because of all of the evil that they used to spread if one of them got a heart attack or a stroke or they were to die you found some of the righteous predecessors showing happiness at that Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him. He found a man that the Prophet told them about and prophesied about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that 
when they kill him, they would have done a great deed. And when Ali found that, yes, that man was killed by his army, Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, he made sajda to shukr because the man was from the khawarij. The man was a problem. But at the same time, Ali ibn Abi Talib, when the people made khuruj against him and they said he was a kafir and they raised their swords against him and they revolted against them, some of the companions who were with Ali asked him, are these people kuffar because of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that these khawarij will go in and out of the religion the way the arrow goes in and out of the game. You know, as if they're not Muslims. they in and out of the religion the way the arrow goes in and out of the game. They said to Ali, are they kuffar? Ali radiallahu anhu said about them to those people, hum ikhwanuna. They are our brothers, but they have oppressed us, making takfir of us. They have oppressed us, revolting against us. And the Prophet said about Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, he is the Aqda Ummati. Aqda Ummati Ali ibn Abi Talib. He is the biggest, greatest judge of this Ummah. And that was the Rahmah that he was upon. Rahmatullahi alayhi. In concluding this, I just want to say one of the great personalities in Al Islam is Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alihi. He had a lot of enemies because he was called into the Sunnah. And you see, whenever the Imams of the Sunnah, whenever they die, then the people of innovation, they rejoice and they're happy. When Al Imam Ahmed died, the Mu'tazila and the Jahmiya, they were happy. It was a time to have a party for them. When Al-Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah died, those people were Sufis, those people were Rafida, because he refuted them. He was a thorn in their neck. They took it as a day of celebration. They were happy. When the Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab died, Rahmatullah al-Jami'i, the people of a tasawwuf they were happy because these people were calling to a Tawheed. They were calling to Al-Islam. But those scholars themselves... They had rahma upon our ummah. Al Imam Ahmed, he would say, Dima, Dima. He cared about the blood of the Muslims. And he didn't want to be responsible for shedding the blood of the Muslims because he cared about the blood of the Muslim. Al Imam Ibn Utaymiyyah, same thing. And this is the point. He had a lot of enemies, and one of his enemies, and I'll never forget as long as I live, Ma Dumtu Hayya. Our Sheikh Ali Al Halabi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, and I invite you to go back and to listen to this class that he gave about a Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh Al Islam, in Luton a few years ago. And he was talking about the minhaj of Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. And he gave a lecture about a Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah and how he dealt with his enemies. There was a man in particular who was responsible for being a serious enemy of. Ibn Taymiyyah, he got him imprisoned, he wanted to get him killed, he called all kind of problems and drama for Ibn Taymiyyah, and he subsequently was imprisoned, and then he came out of the prison, and that man, he died, his enemy, who was a deviant, who called to deviance, and he was a problem, and then when the students of Ibn Taymiyyah heard that this man died, and who was his students? Al Imam ibn Kathir, Al Imam al Dhahabi, Al Imam ibn Daqiq uh, al Eid, these great scholars, Ibn Hadi, great scholars, Al Imam al Dhahabi. One of his students came to give him the glad tidings that his enemy, who got him in prison and who tried to get him killed, has died. He wanted to give him a bushra, glad tidings. Ibn Utaymiyyah became upset and he said to him, Tubashirini bimoti muslimin. Do you want to come give me the glad tidings of a Muslim that has died? Is that what you is that what you're on? Is that what you're on? Whoever from amongst us does not live in a glass house, then go ahead. Throw the first stone. But what I know is that all of us, and Allahu Alam, we live in glass houses. You know what we're up to and what we're doing, and we want to come in front of the people strong like that. And make these dua. Okay, if you want to do that, go ahead. Allah didn't make that wajib upon you. But have mercy upon the Muslims. Have mercy upon the Muslims. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do. 
Abu Sama Dehibi. I can't speak for anybody else. You do what you want to do. But I ask Allah Azzawajal by his ism al adam That ism, that name, that if he is asked by, he gives it to a slave. Inshallah ta'ala. Oh Allah, have mercy upon this man. And put him in the Jannah for the dose. And accept from him all of his juhud and his efforts that were correct, right, and exact. And forgive the man for his zilat. And have mercy upon us the day that we meet you. The day that money and children and kalam will not benefit the people. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu ummat al-Islam.